Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be showing you how I sketch and paint this scene of a beautiful door and a few windows in Venice. So this is the reference photo and as you can see, there are lots of little details. And I like this little rack in front that has wheels and of course the bushy frame for the door and the windows. So this place gave me that warm, nostalgic feel, kind of like home. Light is coming from this direction, from the top right, so these areas here will be in shadow. I will be using this 25% cotton 300 GSM watercolor paper, some Holbein paints, and some synthetic brushes so you can find all the details for these materials that i'm using in the description down below or you can check out my other videos as well so now let's get straight to color mixing i will be starting with watercolor first before drawing the pen outlines so i'm going to mix the three basic colors for this piece in advance so this first color that I'm mixing is a mixture of sap green, burnt sienna, and yellow ochre. So it's quite a warm green. The second color is a mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And the third color is Compost Blue plus Cerulean Blue. So I decided later to add some Burnt Sienna as well. So you can see that it becomes a more warm blue color. So overall, I'm trying to mix some warmer shades for that warm home vibe. So everything has Burnt Sienna in it. It's a little overuse of Burnt Sienna maybe, but I don't think that's a bad thing at all. So now I'm wetting the surface of the paper with clean water and making sure to make it really moist and shiny so the paint will flow and spread. So for this piece, I'm starting with the greens as you can see and I'm pressing harder or softer with the brush to create different strokes. And I'm also varying up the intensity of the paints. Sometimes I'm using a little bit more water, sometimes I'm using a little bit more paint. So this piece has a lot of greens. And in fact, it takes up almost half of this piece. So um, it's good to be really careful to uh, remember to leave space for the windows and the door. So sometimes you go a little bit crazy and then you forget, oh, I, I forgot to leave some, place, some places unpainted. So yeah, you do need to be careful even though it is, uh, it looks like it's very loose and free. Next, I used the second color that we mixed before, the brownish red for the brick wall and those flower pots as well. So the third color is of course the blue that we mixed before for the windows and also the door.
This paper dries quite fast compared to 100% cotton papers. So if it dries and I want to have soft edges still, then I use a wet clean brush to soften the edges. At this point, maybe it is a bit of a mess, and that is completely fine. I think as we grow older, we get more afraid of making a mess, but luckily that does not apply to art. Not my art, at least. So I'm just having some fun, and I'm just setting the mood and location for everything in this piece. And I think the trick is finding the order in the mess. So after that first layer is done, we wait for it to dry. And after it has dried, we will start with the ink outlines. So I'm using this Micron pen, size 05. It is waterproof and the ink does not bleed. So even if the paper is still a little bit damp, it is completely fine to start inking um, with this fineliner. Some inks don't do well even if the paper is a little bit damp, but um, using fine liners, you don't really have to worry much. So um, before I start, sometimes I use my pen to estimate where the lines should be and to help me visualize where the lines slant. And I also leave space and um, make dotted lines at times. You can see that right here. So that is how I provide room for other elements like the plants that I will be drawing in later. So this is not an exact science. It is not an architectural drawing. I'm not measuring anything at all and I don't hope for it to be. Uh, an exact drawing. So if I wanted this drawing to be super accurate, I could trace over the photo, but where's the fun in that, right? So I've been reading a book written by a Zen monk about the art of simple living. And he describes how Zen monks have always had an interest in calligraphy and painting not because they are interested in leaving behind work of lasting value, but rather in attempting to express themselves through the artwork. And that really resonated with me because I think that is why, that is the main reason why I like to draw and like to paint and sketch. Even though sometimes I paint and sketch for other people. It's mainly when I paint for myself or sketch for myself that I really feel like I have, I don't know, I've um, expressed something that is that I have been feeling. Um, it's very hard to describe it unless you are uh, an artist yourself, you will know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you feel a certain way and um, because you drew this um, artwork, you feel like you have expressed that feeling. Um, rather than talking to other people about your feelings, um, sometimes it is even better to draw something, to sketch something when you're feeling a certain way. And then when other people look at your art, um, it feels like you have communicated what you are feeling. And I, f I find that really magical about art that is created by humans, right? So now there is a lot of, you know, AI generated art and etc. And I don't think it is the same. 
Um, maybe aesthetically, it might be, but real art create, created by real humans, um, they evoke a feeling in other humans, in other people, right? Because each stroke is done by you. Each stroke is done by the artist. And it, it just feels different, right? So for this piece in particular, I felt really moved by the simplicity of the place. And yet the many beautiful little details gave this place a soul and spirit that draws you in. You can see the care that goes into maintaining the place as well as the liveliness of it all. It, and I think a lot of old places have that feel. So I was actually feeling a little anxious when I drew this actually. Not because I was stressed about the, the sketch, but because of other aspects of my life. So I think I wanted to find, I needed to find a safe and inviting place to escape to. And oftentimes that is my sketchbook or um, my drawings. And maybe that is also the reason that I chose this place to sketch. But because I was feeling quite complicated, feeling like a little anxious and um, conflicted, so I, I think I didn't simplify this piece like I do some of my work. I actually added a lot like more and more details as I got along and I think it is a sort of reflection of my complicated feelings and this is only halfway through the sketch but later on you'll see how much detail I add in and um, I think at the end you can sort of see that I was feeling complicated This piece actually took me a few nights to finish. It wasn't like half an hour or an hour even. The whole footage, the, all the footage came up to about two hours. And that's a really hefty video to put on YouTube. But since many of you like watching the sketching process in real time, I will be uploading the full real-time version for on Ko-Fi so you can go and check that out if you are interested and I will put the link down below. So even though I said I wasn't thinking when I was sketching this, I, I'm always keeping in mind um, to try and mimic the perspective from the reference so that is that is the, the the bones the basic foundation of your sketch and then you can just do everything else any way you like but for the perspective um we are actually looking at this um house should we call it a house i don't know this door this wall um we are looking at this scene from the side and not straight on so these lines are not straight not perpendicular to each other and uh, a lot of these lines are actually converging together to a point which is far off the page so it's a little bit hard to show you where they are converging to because it's off the page um, but I always use my pen to estimate and see um, where the lines should slant before I draw them. This gives a little bit of order to the chaos. Of course, I don't always get it um, exactly right. So you can see right here, those grills in the front uh, are not exactly the same as in the photo. 
But to me, that is not something that I want to worry too much about, because oftentimes the artist is the one that notices all the mistakes, whilst everyone else doesn't even notice or care about it. In fact. Plus, I think mistakes are inevitable on your journey. You can only try and not make the same mistakes twice. Learning is never ending. It is a never-ending process, and there is always something new to learn. So right here, I am drawing these bricks on the left, a little bit larger than those that I drew on the right side, because these bricks on the left side are actually closer to us. So simple things like this make quite a big difference in the overall sketch. So finally, we are done with the line work, and now I am starting with the second and third layers of watercolor. Here I am painting a mid-tone green using the same green mixture as before, and then after I've painted in that mid-tone green in certain areas that are a bit darker, I then add even an even darker third layer of green. For these bushes, the shadows are more concentrated on the left lower region and I'm taking care to preserve the light green in the upper right regions to sort of build up the shape and form of these bushes. And I actually call them bushes, but I don't think it's actually supposed to be called bushes. I think it's actually ivy. If anyone knows what plants these are in the photo, please do tell me down in the comments below. Another thing that I noticed about plants is that some beginners tend to paint all these leaves, all these strokes in the same direction. So it looks very uniform and um, not very natural. 
So here you can see that I am trying to angle some of these leaves upwards and pointing toward the sun. And um, all these leaves don't look the same. Some of them live in the shadow and some of them live closer to the sun. So none of them are exactly the same. Next, I'm using the blue mixture to paint in the window on the top. And this window is one of the brightest parts of this piece. And I'm being really careful to preserve some of the first light blue layer where there should be um, more sunlight, where it is brighter. Next, I'm using some ultramarine deep mixed with that blue that we um, used before for some light shadows. Here I'm mixing some dark green for the door. So I actually use the green um, that we used before and I added some ultramarine deep and burnt sienna So I alternated the dark green with the blue color that we used before for the second layer of the door. It is so fun to see paint mix on the page. And now I'm coming in with the third layer to make that door darker. Here I'm using this actually the same green but I mixed in more blue um, for the pot in the front. So this sketch is also propped up a little bit, so the pigments and the paint naturally flow downwards more, so you get a little gradient with the bottom looking darker. And now I'm moving on to the browns or the reddish brown, and I'm painting the pots here, and then I'm going to paint also the brick wall. Thank you. 
When the paint is still wet, I can still lift the paint off to make these lighter areas like so. So here I'm trying to paint some texture that looks like bricks on the wall. And that reddish brown really complements all that green in this piece. Here I am painting the foliage on the left side and the way that I did it was I painted, I dotted in some leaves using the green and then I proceeded to use burnt umber plus ultramarine to paint in these stalks. So it looks quite different from the bushes on the right side. Then after that layer dried, I came in again with some darker green to add more leaves. Here I'm painting the grills with some grayish blue color and it's also burnt umber mixed with ultramarine deep but with less burnt umber so it doesn't look as brown as say those stalks and that um, wood color. So mixing colors is an art in itself and you have to really experiment for some time before you can find the best combinations that work well for you. The reflections on this piece of glass on the door were very, very clear. So you can see the opposite wall, you can see another window and a table, even the bushes and grills right in front of the door. So I decided to paint this one in a more detailed style than my other works.
So now I'm adding some shadows and these are the last one of some of the last shadows that I'll be adding and I'm using a more bluish tone for the shadows and that sort of counters all that burnt sienna and all that brown that we see in this piece. As I mentioned before, I did add lots of details for this piece, even to a point where I wondered if I was actually overworking it. But to be honest, at that at that time, I I was feeling like I um I didn't really care if it was overworked. I was feeling really complicated and sort of stressed out about life in general. So I guess this piece looks more complicated than my other works, whereby in those works, when I was making them, I was feeling, maybe I was feeling happy and maybe I was feeling lighter. So I think my color choices were also affected by my mood. So in general, what I'm seeing is that this piece has... Um, not as bright and cheerful tones, but I quite like that it has different elements that um, sort of makes it a bit complicated. But then um, because one side, like the top, is very bright and the bottom is kind of dark and moody, it, it feels um, balanced for some reason. And um, I don't know. To me, it feels like a reflection of my life. There are happy times and bad times. And there are times when um, I don't actually feel really happy painting. I feel very flustered, maybe frustrated. And I'm just painting. And yeah, I think that's something that is interesting about this piece. Well, I guess that is my own interpretation of my own work and I'm sure many of you feel differently and I actually would love to hear your comments. I would like to read them and um, do you think it's overworked? Do you think it could do with less detail or more detail? I would love to hear what you guys think. So after I um, added more and more of these details, I decided that I would stop and I would look at it from afar for a while. And after observing it for a while, I decided to add even more stuff. And uh, <laughs> I actually added a bit more leaves on the ground after that. And it's done. One of the more complicated looking sketches that I have done so far. And a loose sketch, I guess it can be simple or it can be complicated. Just like how I don't always feel the same and so my art never stays the same as well. If you would like to watch this process in real time, you can head over to my Ko-Fi page where you can also find the line work for this and also the reference photo. So if you found this video helpful, do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.